He's not okay. Well, well, neither know we. that. None of us are okay. Welcome into another edition of the PHMX D Backs podcast, right here after another post game. Bullpen loss, I guess you could say. My name is Derek Montia. I am sometimes known as your mayor of the city of Phoenix, but I don't even want to be associated at this uh, point, with what's going you're on. You're the mayor here. of like fucking Gotham City. Like, yeah. uh, why would you even want to be? Con- why would you want to be known as the mayor yeah. of that city? See, he's right. He's right. I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, I don't want to disown you, Phoenix, but sometimes I feel like I have to. This guy next to me, uh, he's going to shut off all of the electricity in, in the city. It's the one and only Sean DePaz. Jesse it's Friedman over. will be joining us shortly here from San Francisco. He has some post-game breakdown of yet, like I said, another loss. But before we get to that, uh, we do have to wonder, are we ever going to see Paul Seawald on the mound? I don't no. know. Zach, uh, Zach in the chat says, we'll never see the mound at this rate. We'll never, we'll never see anything. We'll never see joy. We'll never see happiness. We'll never see anything again. I don't know. Uh, of course... Want to start off with with the good, and of course the good is is that Slate's Coney absolutely shoved in his debut. Uh, it wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Got his very first uh, strikeout in his first uh, at bat in the weirdest way possible. In the weirdest <laughs> possible way, uh, it started off as as a uh, hit by pitch. That after it was reviewed, it was seen that it, the pitch actually hit the knob of Lamont Wade Jr.'s bat and then was caught by Jose Herrera. For a foul tip catch and then the strikeout. So uh, uh, Jose yeah. Herrera needs a gold glove. I said it out there. Jose I'll Herrera was was phenomenal. He's a defensive specialist. Um, um, it's that the Yadier Molina retired. Someone needed to fill those. I guess yeah. Catch his gear and Jose Herrera is the man to do it. Uh, Cole says thanks for not getting a starter at the deadline. Hazen at this point. I don't even know if the starter. Well, yeah, is, I mean the starter is where is we're gonna blame here. it on. The, you know, damn the bats and the bats. Have gone, have started hibernate, and the bullpen can't pitch. You're still doing the the you're still doing the, the toothpick thing, huh? I mean, I'm I'm a toothpick guy, as you yeah, said yesterday. You so. are you're a toothpick guy now. Do you see what the losses are doing? They're, I'm gonna start smoking uh, fucking cigarettes. <laughs> don't like on the show. I would be fucking ripping darts. I didn't think you were gonna say cigarettes at all. <laughs> I'm, gonna start smoking, a lot of things. I'm gonna start smoking some dog. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things uh, we want to do to get over these losses because they are tough. But uh, let me tell you, I loved going back to Sacconi. I did love uh, his emotion on the mound. Yeah, I did love the outing. I felt it was very encouraging. Uh, pumping his fist after he got that uh, got out of that fourth, still scoreless. Uh, it struggled there to get through five innings, uh, but was able to still keep it within reach. Mm-hmm. Um, his his line. He ends up at four and two thirds innings pitched. Four hits, two earned runs, one walk, two strikeouts. But when you talk about emotions, uh, the the Sacconi family made me feel all the feels, yeah. right? Like yeah. they had a video on the broadcast of his father just absolutely tearing up. At, I think I think it was the video that was being played on the in uh, on the uh, in stadium monitors yeah. of, of yeah, yeah. the starting pitchers, and he saw Slade up there, and like just what it's a moment that a, was. It's gotta be such a crazy feeling. I mean, That's for real, be so crazy. <laughs> it's, and it looks, it, I think little brother was there too. Yeah, the, the big family, big family jersey. show. Like, yeah. oh man, just something like to wear a family member's jersey. I feel like has to be such a crazy experience. Right, right. Like, I mean, all so of that surreal. is so. It, it has to be so crazy. It, it's it, being present at times. Like we've had the opportunity to be present for some of these guys' debut and some of these moments. It just really puts it into perspective that these are real people, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Sometimes the better an athlete is, the higher level of like being an elite, you know, athlete, being a, a, a big celebrity makes them more, less and less of a real person. Like, yeah. to, well, to yeah, fans and I mean, and it's such, not right? even j- just like well, the athletes or whatever, they're professional athletes, but like the family, those, those are uh, they, like that. That's just a mom that was taking her kid to play Little League in yeah. the same way that my mom took me to play Little yeah. League yeah. at a point. Like, yeah. it, so. Like for for outside of just the athletes being people, like the families, they this is that's like this is real life for them. And his mom gave an incredible interview. Yeah. Like his mom's interview, or his, his mom's interview was heartfelt. Uh, but more than that, it was like a good interview. She was yeah. she had she had she had good answers. I mean, in. I know a lot of times when you know uh, when when they're in that position and Todd comes over. Uh, to talk to them, it it can be a little bit, uh, you know, yeah. ner- you can be a little nervous. It can be a little nerve wracking. Oh, huh? Getting hit by that. that Todd. Todd's a G. Todd is a G. Todd. 
took a ball off the forearm and just kept plugging along. And my man is uh, a seasoned vet in the game, yeah. right? Like, there's nothing that's going to shake him uh, from doing his job. But uh, Slade did, like I said, he wasn't perfect, uh, but he just was effective today. He went out there with a lot of confidence, like I said, a lot of emotion. Uh, here's the balls that were put in play against him, though. And it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, of course, just not not great. A lot of stuff that was right down the middle, a lot of mistakes uh, that were made. But to be honest, uh, he still was able to get through and, and you know, uh, fi find a way to get out. Uh, of course, like I said, that that fifth inning became a little bit uh, a little bit of a struggle for him. And especially uh, he was scoreless entering into that fifth inning, mm -hmm. uh, gave up the two two earned runs. But like I said, uh, did give the Arizona Diamondbacks at least uh, for this night. He gave them an opportunity to win it. When he left the game, it was tied 2-2. Um, yeah. And then, of course, the bullpen happened. The D-backs, though, uh, before we go in on the bullpen, they didn't win the margins tonight. They, t they said that on yeah. the, broadcast. the broadcast. There were a lot of instances where the Diamondbacks just – once again, we're sloppy defensively. Uh, the bats, nowhere to be found Dog. at times. I mean, one hit after the first inning, right? Which, uh, shout out to Chris Gargiola on the radio broadcast because he actually called that. Uh, he said that Logan Webb, yeah, if he yeah, does yeah. give up runs, usually gives them up in the first. And if you're going to score against him, you better make sure you do it early. And, and they did do that. Uh, but Logan Webb, once again, uh, shut the Diamondbacks down just as Gargiola said he would. And they did not... Uh, they they were not able to produce anything. I mean, it, it felt like everything that they tried, uh, nothing was working, but they no. couldn't even get it at one point out of the infield. No, yeah. I mean, I, we were joking about it. Like, when you have Jace Peterson batting fifth, I believe, right? Batting fifth in the lineup? Yeah, that was like, fucking that's, a nightmare. Like, that's, abs that's absurd. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, that sounds like something that the, I don't know, the Oakland Athletics would do. It means your dad. Not, uh, did he even hit fifth for the A's? Just drop, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's my point. Like, it sounds like something, a, a franchise that is a complete and utter joke. I just dropped my toothpick, by the way. Yeah, um, that's the toothpick. Uh, the gimmicks. Probably the gimmicks. Yeah, like an eight hour. Yeah. Uh, there's a disclaimer later that yeah. I can go get another one. But, um, yeah, man, I, 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 I don't know what's up with the bats. Jace Peterson is contributing, but. And then he's, he's immediately costing. He's doing he's too taking much. Away every contribution Stop he makes. doing too much. You're doing too much. He got caught stealing after getting a leadoff single in the eighth inning of last night's game, uh, which could have been a very valuable position for them. Uh, and then he gets gunned down in this game, trying oh to turn a God, single and a double yeah. in the first inning. Luckily, he the almost cost them scored. another run. Yeah. In the in in the, with the dog shit throw he had from third to home. Trying he to did. He did. He almost home. did. And then he also kind of botched a foul ball play there that he should have had. But I'm not going to blame him for that one. What we're saying is less is more, Jace. That's mm -hmm. all we're saying. We're saying stop trying so hard, which is something that could be said for the entire Diamondbacks offense because it feels like everybody's pressing. Hey, uh, Lourdes is I back at say, least. Lourdes is at least Lourdes, Lourdes is, is back. Yeah, like Lourdes, Lourdes is, is back. But uh, when you talk about not showing signs of life, that would be the bullpen. Uh, this would be, uh, if, my, if I'm not mistaken, the 20th bullpen loss of the season. Tyler Gilbert was flat out terrible. Uh, he came he came in. He, got, he did get one out to get... Uh, out of that fifth inning, but once the sixth inning rolled around, uh, he gave up five hits, two earned runs in one inning. Uh, and let's take a look at, at at Tyler Gilbert's balls put in play because, uh, yeah, 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 just right down the middle. And that's not a that's not a fast four seam fastball at all. Just, you know, don't don't think that's Dude, actually a fastball. Tonight. Yeah. It was it was uh, bad, and um, I mean, uh, on one like I have been pretty, I, I feel like defensive of Tory, but holy shit, my guy! Like, what are we? Why was every, he left out there so long? Every every <laughs> like, single hit, every single out, everything that came off of a bat against Tyler so Gilbert loud. in the sixth was so loud. It was so loud. And it there was, was like a point the, where the bases were loaded, but no runs had scored yet. And he was getting double, smacked around. It was the most obvious thing ever. It, it was, was it was the, the most predictable thing ever. It Why fucking Brett absolutely was. We were like, he's going to give up two runs right here. Yeah, we said like, it. We said it. We didn't know how. We didn't know it was going to be a double. We didn't know exactly how they were going to score. If it was going to be two singles. Yeah, but, what uh, combination uh, of things? Uh, but we two knew two runs. Run RBI score. double was the most predictable thing that happened in that situation. Uh, to everybody except for Tori Lavello, apparently. I don't. I, that one, I, I just, I simply don't really have an explanation for as to why you're keeping him out there. Um, with how just like like we said, just 
Everything was getting absolutely I mean, smacked. John's right. Gilbert should never have come back out for the six. That should have been when you moved on to the next pitcher because you it's yes. the end of the inning. You, you get out of it. Uh, Erwin Altman says, I love Alec Thomas's defense. We don't say enough about it. Absolutely. Alec Thomas's offense, uh, to, to borrow a phrase, but my friend here, dog shit lately. Yeah. But uh, his defense has been pretty damn yeah, good. But the other, oh. He said in the eighth, he gets call, uh, called for a check swing on a ball that was outside. Why is he swinging? On the three zero pitch when we were down by two runs, uh, that's we, what Damon was. was we screamed about that. We yeah. like literally screamed. Baseball one hundred and one was. You just you just take right there. It's no literally matter what, like the first thing, you like never, one of the, one of the first things. <sighs> like I genuinely, I'm trying to think of, of some kind of like baseball strategy type thing that you learn before don't swing at a three zero pitch, mm. like. I mean, I mean, like tossing, like playing catch is no. But I mean, like, a, like from a str- like from a, like from a strategy perspective. Yeah. Like I, I don't you, know. like you run, and you run. I, no, like I can't think of anything. That's what we mean by the D backs did not win the margins tonight. It's a, it's those instances, those abilities to have a runner on base. To tell because the Diamondbacks just could not get runners on base they couldn't really make anything start happening offensively tonight. And Cattell defensively is is just becoming harder and harder to watch by the day. Um, Diamondbacks were 500 tonight with runners in scoring position because they only had two runners in scoring position all yeah, night long. Something cool, guys. Uh, that's, yeah, that's right. And that hey, would be, hey. if I'm, again, if I'm not mistaken, that would be two runners in scoring position for the last two games. Uh, in all due respect to the Diamondbacks, we said nonstop that they need to start uh, hitting better with runners in scoring position, and they said... Uh, fine, we just won't get runners in scoring <laughs> position. Touche. Yeah, they just, they, they just they have fucking those opportunities. 360 on us. Yeah. Um, I want to give some flowers out, and I want to give flowers out to Scott McGuff for his fourth scoreless outing in a row. He remains sexy. Yeah. Uh, it's still, it still lights out time when he comes in. Uh, and again, like I said, this was the 20th bullpen loss of the year. The reverse bullpen jinx thing that's happening is fucking maddening right now because the Diamondbacks not only – have a bullpen that can't seemingly keep from allowing runs to score in some capacity. Like it, whether, whether they're ahead, whether it's a tie they're they can't even keep the game close, even if it's like a one run game and it's late. Right. Um, but they also can't seem to do anything themselves offensively against an opposing team's bullpen anymore. We talked about in the past, how like they made starting pitching look really good, but once they were getting to the bullpen, they were able to be effective and, and kind of, change things up that's part of where the whole answer backs shtick came from but right now it seems like they can't do anything against the bullpen and their bullpen can't do much against the oppositions uh but speaking of bullpen again talking about more flowers austin adams fractured his goddamn right ankle in last night's game when he got hit by that comebacker uh the man just bent over um and took a long sigh and then walked off the field with a fractured ankle uh, I mean, and then stood around in the dugout with a fractured ankle and then walked down. If, if, and if I, I can't stress this enough, an ungodly amount of steps to get from that bullpen uh, or from the dugout to to the clubhouse there at Giant Stadium. So uh, he's just an absolute beast and maybe the toughest human being that I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, I mean, I said, that's what I was saying last night. Bring out a wheelchair for me if that ever happens. There were others. There were others around. Not naming names. There were others around. Put a brace on my neck. Big big country. Um, (laughs) He's not big country, but he's got a big country vibe to him. There was others. There's others around in the office. Just people criticizing his reaction, being like, "You got to shake that off." You're. Oh, you're just a, you're a big oh, man, but yeah, uh, it wasn't me, was it? No, it was no, just somebody really else in the office. It. There's, there's like 20 you? people that. Are yeah, in no, office. you're right. I there are possibly think there are, are. Um, uh, not 20 people at this time of night when this kind of thing uh, happens. But it was so, the other so night. Really yeah, I was around any of the possibilities of which one of I was. Three keep, of listen, us I just want to say I was keeping this real discreet. I don't think there was any way that based on what I was saying, anyone was actually going to glean as to who I was talking about. I just don't know who it possibly could be. I have no idea. I have no idea. Also, we're trying to find the guy who did this. Right, and also make the play. Yeah, <laughs> make the play. No, but for real, like at, at the time, I almost, I was almost concerned because the fact that he was just like, I mean, he, Adams is like a a big tough dude, and to see him just stop yeah. and just like, 
Yeah. It'd be like have that not not and I don't want to make it seem like I like I was like, oh, this guy's in shock. He's clearly but like no. it was like yeah, but his, it was his, concerning to see him stop. Like, his reaction was similar to what happens when you get hit as a man in the testicles, right? Like it was that kind of like wind knocked out of him. Yeah, like right? He, uh, like bent over, needs a moment. Awesome. Because um, it would have made to, a lesser man and mo- and by which I mean most men scream. And cuss and swear, and he just yeah, they would have fallen fucking, down to the ground. They yeah, would have sat he, on the, the thing, ground. He was they still there, like on both leg. feet. Yeah, he walked off with Tori, kind of like putting his arm yeah, over him a little bit. Tough. Like, oh man, that man is incredibly tough. And, and the Diamondbacks are gonna be once again without yet another arm. Uh, who knows what happens with Tyler Gilbert? I'm sure Tyler Gilbert will stay just out of necessity, but there will probably be some more roster changes. Of course. Uh, the Austin Adams going to the IL was the uh, corresponding move for calling up Slade Ciccone. So for the time being, uh, it, it appears Slade will remain in the lineup and are in the starting rotation. And, and we'll see him hopefully work towards, uh, you know, a little bit lengthier outings than he had today. But uh, it's very encouraging outing. And it was very nice for his family yeah. to, to have that moment and be there for that. Uh, we, of course, appreciate you, our members of the PHNX uh, sports family for being here in the YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do so now. Sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss when any of our shows go live. Uh, leave us a little thumbs up just so that we, you know you make us feel better. We're, we're, we didn't lose the game. Let's just remember that. Me and John uh, did not lose this game. But uh, of course, if you are listening on the audio podcasting side, please subscribe to us there. Leave us a review. We always appreciate your feedback. Uh, most importantly, we appreciate you guys being members of the PHNX Die Hard family. If you haven't signed up yet to become a Die Hard, do so today. Go over to gophnx.com, sign up, become a member of the family, get yourself a piece of PHNX merchandise from the phnxlocker.com, and also 20% off all future purchases. You also get access to our members only Discord Lounge, which is the best place to be an Arizona sports fan. You get uh, access to Jesse's newsletter, Full Camp, and all the food, uh, all the wonderful content uh, behind the paywall here at gophnx.com. You also get discounts from our partners, a Mountain Mike's gift certificate, a ranch card from Dobson, Dobson Ranch Golf Course, and so much more, uh, including members only discounts uh, to those partners, discounts on events like our upcoming takeover on August 12th, uh, as well as, uh, you know, little, little, little extra special things like members only merchandise and such. So join us today and become a diehard member. Uh, big shout out to Bet MGM because, of course, Bet MGM makes even nights like tonight uh, fun. Uh, even, yeah. even when things aren't going good, I love live betting on Bet MGM because. You know, you get those those moments in yeah. games. Like tonight's game wasn't a blowout loss, but you started to feel a sense of dread. So what better way to pick yourself up than to win a little money, right? Uh, yeah, or, or, or by having a future on the uh, eventual NL, uh, NL champion Chicago Cubs and being able to look at them, their success and being like, okay, at least I have... At least something is going to You really went there? Because I don't know if you know this. The Chicago Cubs will not be denied. They are going to win the National League. They've scored 36 runs in the last 24 hours, I believe. Something like that. That's, I that feel correct? like a little more than the D-backs. Have yeah, just, I think, more. The Diamondbacks have had two runners in scoring position. I in the saw last on YouTube hours. right now the CHGO Cubs uh, like thumbnail, and it just made me like physically ill yeah. just looking at how much fun they're having yeah, over there. they're having a good time. Uh, we are not. The vibes are not immaculate, but like I said, BetMGM picks me up. Uh, especially when I can win a little money betting on uh, something like, let's say, the Diamondbacks not scoring anymore. Or something the Cubs I winning the National League. Or the Cubs scoring a 1,000 runs in a game. That's probably a pretty safe bet. But, but you can also in. get down on Nerfy Friday. Of course, a Nerfy is a no-run first-inning bet, and you can do that by opting in on the promotion. First, you have to be a Bet MGM Sports user, of we course. We're going to be at the Sportsbook this Friday. We are going to be there this Friday. A little Nerfy action. A little Nerfy action. A little live Nerfy action. Fraction. Yeah, that's right. Live Nerfy action on Friday. Join us out there at the Bet MGM Sportsbook out there in Glendale. Uh, and we're going to have some cornhole going on. Uh, we got that cornhole tournament knockout nights, our final one of the year, August 4th. Uh, check in is at 6 30 p.m., but we will be there all day. So if you want to join us for lunch or to come watch us do our thing, make sure to check us out over there at the Bet MGM Sportsbook. Uh, of course, in the meantime, we will be making bets over there, getting on the Nerfy Fridays, where, of course, uh, if you bet no on the will there be a no, will there be a run in the first inning market? Uh, and if your bet loses, and only one run is scored during the first inning, you will receive a bonus bet equaling your stake up to $25. So, of course, we're all throwing $25 on a Nerfie on Friday. Of course, available only on Friday. And if you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, use bonus code PHNX. Uh, There's all sorts of benefits to signing up for BetMGM. I myself am now a Pearl member. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just throwing my status out there because, you know, 
once you once you become a pearl member, you kind of understand that more. But there's, uh, you know, uh, again, again, you kind of you kind of flex on us. Like, I feel, I, yeah, like I feel like I'm stuck in a flex now. But I wasn't trying to initially. I was. Just I mean, trying it is to be a like, flex. So it I is, mean, uh, yeah, I get free parking at MGM, you know, hotels. So like, what yeah, what more would you want? Free. But there's also a lot of cool benefits to being uh, being on that. So you got to get Bet MGM account. You got to get Bet MGM app. Uh, of course, there's a few different offers depending on where you live. But when you use that bonus, go to PHNX. Uh, for our Arizona audience, you can place your first bet offer and receive up to $1,000 in bonus bets if it loses with BetMGM. So, again, make sure you use that bonus code PHNX. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-522-4700, Nevada. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Kansas, Nevada, New York, or Ontario. I got a thing. Cheers to you. I got my beer. Uh, cheers to you all. Uh, like we said, things aren't great. Wild card standings aren't great, especially. Uh, things aren't great with the Diamondbacks. Things aren't great with us. Things aren't great with the All-City standings. The toothpick's pretty good. Toothpick, uh, you got a fresh toothpick. So, yeah, and this beer from Four Peaks, of course, is... is, is uh, I got a little staycation. Oh, super juicy? Super juicy IPA. Uh, good, but good let's choice. take a look at the current wild card standings because... Uh, yeah. I don't want to, but they will not be denied. Mm. The Chicago Cubs. I mean, look, mm. uh, we got the Padres right there, just staring over they're at three us. Three and seven in their last uh. ten, and they're still only a half game out. Like you look at, look, they all suck. Everyone sucks. Yeah. Uh, so it's a good but time. Mostly to suck. we suck. Yeah. Oh no. I don't oh, want to. It's the not a good time to suck. The Diamondbacks suck more than. I, it's not a good time to suck. It's never a good time to suck. It is the least worst time to suck. Um, there are worse times to suck if you're the Arizona Diamondbacks. Again, but again, all these te- like this isn't just a Diamondback situation. You look at the teams that for the first half of the, like the first half of the year, this was a a Arizona, Miami, what um, Milwaukee or Cincinnati or or really LA, I guess, because it, they were winning the division. The Diamondbacks winning the division at a point. Like all of a sudden, you got the you got Philly and and Chicago and oh my God, what is that? Whose music is that? It's the San Diego Padres, three oh, and a half games I back. I just want to clarify. My God, that man had a family. It's also we're also fifty seven and fifty two. This is not uh, in like timely accurate. Oh yeah, we're one worse than that. So we're a game and a half outside the wild card. Mm. <sighs> it's it's worse. Cool, cool, Damon. Cool. That's great. Listen. I mean, as long as it's still close, anything's possible. So, like, I, I mean, I was talking about this with Damon. It's over. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's over, but they're not dead yet. Like, I'm not pronouncing them dead. Anything's possible. Um, He did declare. Wh- who did you declare dead? Did we do a time? Was it Padres? I think it was the Padres, Padres? which I, is a stupid, a stupid decision from me. Yeah. I don't know what my punishment will be, but I yeah. will punish myself in some way if yeah. they come back and accomplish something. I don't want to bring up the record for the Diamondbacks since you joined the show, but... um. I think that's something that people should really just keep in mind. Uh, let's also take a look at the all city standings because again, the Cubs, they're just coming in hot. Maybe. Coming what in is the hot. Cubs record since I joined the show? Not what I want to know. What are the Cubs? What's the Cubs record since I visited Wrigley Field? Because that might be a scary thing uh, for me to look into as well. Of course, there are two other teams that are part of this division, but kind of. Do they are they even Team, at this point? Quote unquote teams. Quote unquote teams. I mean a quote unquote play baseball. Allegedly. 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 Did um, the White Sox, what did the White Sox do today? Because I know they had punch out Poppy Dill and Seas on the mound. I think they lost by ten runs. Good. <laughs> Precisely what I saw coming. Yeah, that sounds uh, about right. Yeah, they lost eleven to one to your Texas Rangers. Um oh, man. Yeah. Well, the Diamondbacks, like I said yesterday, they have a lot of tough series ahead. But, of course, uh, this upcoming series with the Twins, we could take a look ahead at the Probables. We have one more game with the Giants tomorrow. Uh, bullpen and, game for them tomorrow. And the Diamondbacks. Is that a bullpen game for, yeah. for the Giants or for the Diamondbacks? For the Giants. They, for the Giants. Well, I just saw who it was. They have um, Scott Alexander as the opener tomorrow for the Giants. All right. I'm going to say this about this upcoming series with the Twins. The Diamondbacks don't win it. The season's over. 
and see Jesse isn't here. I feel to like calm me we've down. heard that. I mean, I don't I know. Don't, I, I, I don't feel like I've said okay, it before. Fair. Fair, fair, fair. And the reason why here is because their back is against the wall. Everything really is is you know everything's bad, and and they need they need to get back on track with Merrill Kelly and Zach Gallon going in a series, and Ryan Nelson going on the road. I I you you have to win this series. You have to come out with two out of three. Yeah, tomorrow's game I feel is also very important for the Diamondbacks to split this series with the Giants, as they brought up on the broadcast several times. Uh, I mean, there there is something to be said about the season series with the giants and how important it might be to, to have the win there, you know, if, if it comes down to a tiebreaker situation, but yeah. Uh, and, and maze devil might be right. Yeah. Huh. It, it's it, over. It, They're not dead yet, but it is over. That's a weird combination of phrases, but um, yeah, if they lose, <laughs> the, if they lose this series against the twins, I'm going to be right there with you and Damon. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if Jesse's going to be able to get me back. I mean, they, they definitely didn't win it, but I, more than just win it. I, I mean, obviously I love it. For them to sweep, but I want to see them win. Like, if they're going to win two games, win them back to back, like win the first two or win the last two. I would just like to see them win consecutive baseball games. It would feel <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, it would feel good. It would feel really, really it would good. Feel good. Can, um, we get, can we get a win on Friday, please? So that when we're doing the show, or is that no, that would be next week. So, like, yeah, I don't care. Two, two of the wins is fine, whatever. No, that is no. during this weekend. This is Friday. I, the look, first game of the series is Friday. The first game is Friday. I don't even know anything anymore, folks, and I don't. I, I've just I've just given up on calendars and time and everything. Uh, I used to know exactly when these games started and when they were going to happen, but now I've just I, I just I just have given up, and uh, I don't know if I'm ready uh, to officially call them dead after this series. But I think I'm going to have to if they can't win it. They're not dead, They're not dead yet. Because uh, I think after that they got the Dodgers, Padres, more Dodgers, more Padres, uh, Cubs. Uh, just a lot of good teams after that. Astros are in there somewhere. They have to play the Yankees, which you're gonna hate. Uh, I'm gonna love. I'm gonna if they if they win. Oh, uh, when they win. When the they win. Are when they a win. Joke. More importantly, they, they, we want to see Paul Seawald. When do we get to see Paul Seawald? God damn You'll it! You'll see him uh, three immaculate innings in that Yankees series tomorrow. from Paul Seawald. I hope you're right. But uh, the Diamondbacks uh, are on the road for that series against the Twins. And, of course, don't forget when you're on the road to stop by a Circle K to make sure to fill yourself up. Uh, maybe after a loss like this, you stop by a Circle K just to get something that makes you feel better a little about life. Honey bun. A little honey bun action, a little, little snacky cake. Mm. Uh, of course, like we've always told you, do not sleep on the Circle K branded snacks because they're incredible. Uh, we were talking Back. yesterday, and we just – Randomly brought up a topic in our meeting of which of the favorite Circle K snacks that Can't we all love. We uh, did. The uh, I almost got violent ch cheddar and caramel popcorn. Uh, that was a, that was a big hit with a lot of people. There's a lot of things you can get at Circle K. But make sure good, check baby. out check out their their. Uh, their, their snacks. Their snacks are incredible. Uh, they also have premium gas, the best coffee and beer uh, selection that you can find, and so much more. Stock up at Circle K, which is America's third stop. Uh, there are some great deals available now, and one of them might earn you an opportunity to fight Sean over a vehicle. Uh, buy four pay, power aids for $5, and you can be entered to win a, a chance to be one of 10 finalists to win a 2023 Ford Big Ben Bronco SUV. And of course, uh, after you get drawn, like I said, you have to fight Sean for the car. Uh, they also have buy two, get one free monster energy drinks and buy two, get one free beatbox hard tea. Make sure you're not missing out on all this wonderful stuff over at Circle K. Uh, right now, text PH PHNX to 31310 to join their SMS subscriber club and you will get a buy one, get one free offer on a Polar Pop. Uh, head to CircleK.com slash store dash locator to find Circle K's near you. And of course, you can also make sure to check out uh, wonderful Four Peaks beer at Circle K or wherever you get your beers at. Uh, Four Peaks is the official craft beer of the Arizona Diamondbacks. They're rattle on red ale. Um, hopefully can make this Diamondbacks team <laughs> rattle on. Uh, make sure to check out the Four Peaks draft room, which is where we will be meeting uh, up before our takeover event here coming up shortly. It's located on the suite level. Uh, there'll be wonderful food to be had, drinks to be had, and of course, a wonderful view from the Four Peaks draft room of, of the game. So make sure to check out the events page in our show notes to find dates and tickets for that D-backs takeover. And of course, follow them. Uh, go to fourpeaks.com slash events to stay up to date on everything Four Peaks. Check them out online uh, on social at Four Peaks Brew or Four Peaks Pub to keep up with everything uh, at Arizona's hometown brewery. Must be 21 or older to drink Four Peaks. Please drink responsibly. Uh, we were supposed to have Jesse 
here at some point of the show, but I don't know what happened to Jesse because Jesse, Jesse is not here. He disappeared on I us. I feel like uh, he's probably getting like reprimanded by Tori, or not like reprimanded, but getting like a really inspirational speech that Tori should probably oh. be giving to the players, but he's just giving to the media instead. Yeah, about like what's going on. And yeah, this is part of baseball, but you know, I got a lot of faith in the guys. They'll figure this out. Uh, Tyler Gilbert got nicked up. Yeah, a bit uh, out there. Uh, he was making some good pitches there. Just yeah. Some things. Yeah. What well, about the offense? Like, uh, unacceptable, unacceptable yeah, performance. It's part, it's part of baseball. Part of baseball. It's part yeah. of baseball. Yeah. I think we need like a Tory cliche bingo game. Is what we need, uh, or maybe just to play some clips of Tory, and then we can guess on what uh, mm -hmm. thing he said yeah. after that. Oh, I right? just. By the way, um, you know what this team really needs? I feel like a bench clearing brawl, like kind of like hockey style. Teams doesn't have any energy. You drop the gloves. You get a fight going. Mm -hmm. This team needs a like uh, R.I.P. Austin Adams ankle. Like it would have been perfect for this. They need somebody to start a fight. Tommy Pham needs to go slap somebody tomorrow. Jock Peterson's there for you. Um, like it needs. I some. I, I'm ready for a little violence. I think this team needs a little chaos, a little injection of, of life. That's you're, you're not wrong. And Tommy Pham is supposed to be with the team tomorrow, right? But not he wasn't available to be with them today. Uh, we do have some videos coming in from Jesse. I think, is that first one? Uh, what was that first one? Jace? That's Slade. Is that Slade? I believe so. Oh, man. We're all over the place with what we got here. Well, Jesse yeah. will Jesse will be with us soon, but uh, we're just we're just delaying the show now so that we make sure that Jesse makes it at some point. But uh, this is this is honestly uh, very common with uh, my experiences with being in the clubhouse after a game because uh, especially when there's somebody particular you want to talk to, like in this in this case, a uh, Slade Sacconi, uh, you don't know when you're going to get him. Yeah. But uh, let's see. First, we have is this uh, Jose Herrera with uh, discussing. What happened there with uh, the strikeout there in the in the first inning? About the strikeout, can you tell us what happened? He wasn't supposed to be like that for oh. his first strikeout, <laughs> but uh, it was fun that we got it for him, and uh, okay. hopefully I, I hold the baller. I think longer than enough, and it was it was a good experience. No hands though. No hands. <laughs> 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 Try to hold it with, with my pants as long as I can. <laughs> Nothing like that has ever happened to you. There's no way. No, even even to me, I think it was the first time in my career that something like that happened, and I, I keep holding the ball. <laughs> and uh, it was it was it was pretty special for that moment. <laughs> that made me happy. Um, and then we also have Slade here with more on that strikeout as well, right? Straight, can you walk through that? Yeah, basically, you know, three, two, threw one right at him, and you know, Hosey. Did a, did a great job, you know, putting his cup on today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, got the strikeout. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> he put his cup on the thing. He put it all out there. He put That's it all hilarious. out there on the line for that strikeout. Um, I got, there was a question in the chat about uh, Tommy Pham. Nate Cleveland asked, is Pham going to be center field or right field? He'll definitely be a corner outfield. Yeah. I don't think we'll see him play center field at all. And much like Jace, uh, Jace Peterson batting fifth tonight, if we do see. Uh, if we do see him in center field, things have gone terribly wrong. Oh, yeah. No, they have. But um, first off, do you think I can pull off like the Herrera like slits in the eyebrow? I think you could. The whole time I was watching that video, I was literally thinking, Sean should do that those slits with his eyebrows. That yeah? was my was only that your thought. Old, yeah, yeah, that was... It's hard, to, it's hard to concentrate sometimes when we're trying to wonder if... I can't do that. Things are working uh, for Sean, but... That that was definitely a unique way to have yeah. not only your first strikeout in Major League Baseball happen, but uh, that was his first batter in Major yeah. League Baseball. So I don't know if I don't know if anybody has that. Like I feel like something like that's got to be good to like kind of shake the nerves though, because like something yeah. like that chaotic and yeah. so weird happens, you're like, okay, what? Like this is just we're here and whatever. Right. Like, right. It kind of takes you out of all of the pressure in the moment of of making your major league debut it also like when uh brent strom came out to kind of calm him down there in the fourth inning i i, I can't help but wonder what brent strom says in yeah. those moments right yeah i would love to be a fly uh, in one of those uh one well, of those moments yeah because like jesse doesn't believe this uh because i've been told this before uh the players will openly tell you this it's not like a secret but they have told us that strom goes out there sometimes and doesn't even talk to you about 
like the moment. Like yeah. he'll just say something funny, or he'll he'll just kind of try to lighten the mood. Yeah, like he's he, trying to give you a, a beat. Like, he he has that experience to know that going out there and telling a guy, you know, you need to throw your fastball up in the fucking strike zone isn't something yeah. he really needs to hear. Because he, he fucking moment. knows that too. He knows. <laughs> he knows. Like, Everybody knows what the job is here. He just can't do it, right? Like that. That's the one thing that's so lost on us sometimes as fans when we're watching these guys of superhuman ability throw a fucking baseball into an area that's about the size of a shoebox, right? Yeah. Like, it's crazy, but we kind of often think, like, why aren't they doing that better? Because they can't. They can't right now in the moment. Yeah, I want it because people are talking about it in the chat. How do you feel about the guys smiling and being happy after? I mean, what do you want? Like, yeah. the, I, honestly, I think that, I do mean, you want personally, people to be somber? Do you absurd want them? to be upset yeah. about. Uh, like, first off, they were talking about a particularly funny moment. Secondly... Like as far, especially as far as Slade is concerned, uh, fuck the loss. That was his major league debut. I don't give a shit. Like he, he probably doesn't really give a shit. He he's not. He's not the reason they lost. He's not the reason they lost. And that yeah. was his major league debut. He's gonna be smiling. Yeah. You know, after this, he's gonna go see his family. And he's gonna have a good night. There are a hundred and sixty-two of these games, yeah, man. win or lose. Like the idea that because a team is losing, you want to see them all boohooing and being down. Like how is that gonna change? What's happening yeah, to them, and I mean, especially it's, it's like thing, a team like the yeah. Diamondbacks that are kind of in this slump right yeah, now. It, it's one well. thing if they were like on the mound and they were or like on or in the dugout or something like that in the middle of the game doing it. But like yeah, the game's over. They're talking about something else like there's it, just I, I think that's the thing is for us again as fans. We only look at the win or the loss. Yeah. Inside of the clubhouse, there's a million other things going on. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, if they if they did hang their hat too much on the wins and losses. If their mood was too dependent on the wins or losses, it would be impossible to get out of a rut like the Diamondbacks. Yeah, that's, are that's how you in. see whole teams like just spiral. Yeah. yeah, you because know what I mean? They, they all are in like a mindset like that. Well, to get his thoughts on smiling in the clubhouse after a loss and more, we are joined by the one and only Thunderstick, Jesse Friedman. Jesse, I don't want to see you smiling, Jesse. Nobody in the chat wants you coming in here smiling, <laughs> looking happy after a loss. Sorry, we're getting into it uh, in, in the comments here because uh, your video showed some some happy-looking Diamondbacks players talking about that strikeout Slate Ciccone had in the first inning. And uh, apparently people don't want any of that. They want... They want sad faces. Uh, they want you, they want people looking like Sean with the fucking toothpick in the, chat are in the mouth. They want him angry. Look at I'm getting angry. I'm he's gonna, surly. I was gonna call people names. Uh, but anyway, what are your what what are your thoughts, Jesse, on what we saw today out of Slade and uh, more importantly, the concept of smiling after a loss? I mean, did you guys watch those videos? Did you hear? Yep. Did you hear Slade Ciccone's line? Jose did a great job putting a cup on today. Yeah. Like, these are, yeah. like these are legendary things that are happening in this clubhouse right now. I don't know why you guys are hating on this. Right? That's uh, what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously not a not a great day of Diamondbacks baseball. And for people, you know, uh, those are the only clips that, that we're showing during the show here. Yeah. Um, we don't want to see you in a fucking jacket having a good time in that good weather out there right now, to be honest. We're sweating our ass off in this office. You know that. That's fair. Uh, but as far as the Diamondbacks clubhouse is concerned, I can assure you there were a lot of long faces, um, you know, after this game. Tori Lovello was was not pleased, as you would expect. And uh, other players, the mood was generally very, very down. Um, it was really just, you know, uh, Slade talking about his his first big league start, which started off pretty well. Um, you know, obviously there was the hilarious strikeout, which it's still it still mm -mm. boggles my mind how that happened. Uh, I think that's going to be something we remember for years and years. That was one of the first things Tori Lovello said is that, you know, we're going to be looking at that video for years and years after this, which I think is absolutely true. But yeah, I mean, Slade didn't give up a hit until the fourth inning. Uh, I don't think he necessarily was pitching quite as well as that showed. Uh, there were a lot of misses in the middle of the plate yeah, that we, for whatever reason... Those. Yeah, for whatever reason, Giants hitters really just struggled to square it up. Uh, they were just kind of getting a little bit underneath Slade's fastball uh, through the first few innings of this game. But eventually it kind of caught up to him. He got clipped for a couple runs there in the fifth inning. Uh, you saw Torrey with a very quick hook uh, going to Tyler Gilbert there in the fifth when Slade was only at 59 pitches. I asked about that after the game, and Torrey said that that was a plan the game even started. They were going to allow Slade Ciccone to go through the, the lineup twice and then 
uh, once they got around to the third time through the order, whatever the situation was, that's when they were going to hand the ball off to somebody else wound up being Tyler Gilbert. So uh, you can kind of understand why the D backs might, might do that. I mean, they're obviously they're, they're trying to win games, right? They're trying to do whatever they can in order to, to win pivotal games here against the San Francisco giants. And uh, you know, on paper, uh, getting Slade in there th- through the lineup a couple times and then turning it over to someone else uh, might have been the best option. Un- unfortunately for the D-backs, it didn't really work out. Do you think this is just a, a momentary thing and that they'll stretch Slade out some more? Or do you think we'll continue to see him use kind of, not necessarily in an opener capacity, but in kind of a shorter capacity like this while he's part of the starting rotation? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if the Diamondbacks tried this sort of thing again. I mean, the San Francisco Giants are, are exhibit A that this kind of thing can work. Uh, I don't know if they're necessarily uh, limiting their guys to two times through the order, but the Giants all year have, have been thriving off of bullpen games and guys coming in out of the bullpen to throw three innings or starting pitchers only throwing a few innings and then and then exiting the game. So it is a viable strategy, and the D-backs are obviously pretty thin in the rotation right now. So if you don't want to put too much pressure on Slade, you know, to, to give you a big time length, then, you know, the D-backs do have some options on this roster to use. And I, I think it does make sense to, to try to explore all of those options. It really feels like the offense is incapable right now. We talked about it. They've had two runners in scoring position in the last two games. Uh, not not at all uh, what you, you want to see. What what What's going on with the offense and especially like, you know, I mean, we know that they've kind of made starting pitchers look good all year, but it feels like they've been very ineffective against like the bullpen uh, against some of these teams once they move past the starting pitcher. They they jumped on Logan Webb right in the first inning. The yeah. D-backs had a two nothing lead within a, within a few minutes. And then before you knew it, Logan Webb was pitching into the seventh inning and, you know, was rattling off one, two, three inning after one, one, two, three inning. one hit by Lourdes after the first inning for, I think, Logan yeah. Webb's the remainder of his outing. Right. Like I was telling uh, I, was, I was telling everybody I was telling this guy next to me uh, that Chris Garagiola called it actually mm-hmm. on yeah. on the bro- on the radio broadcast. He had said that. You know, Logan Webb, the Diamondbacks need to get to him early because after the first inning, usually he doesn't give up much. And that was exactly the case today. I feel like I don't have numbers in front of me, but I feel like we've seen this before where you feel like you kind of got Logan Webb in in the first inning. You're like, all right, Logan Webb, like this is going to be one of those clunkers. And then he just does what he did today where he made some adjustments. And we talked with Christian Walker about it after the game and Talked about how the D-backs did try to make some adjustments back, but there's a reason that a guy like Logan Webb is as good as he is. This is the third time the Diamondbacks have faced him this year, and this is the third time that Logan Webb has gotten 21 outs in a baseball game this year against the Arizona Diamondbacks. So he's been really, really good against the D-backs this season, and uh, that continue today. They just are, they just have a, a really hard time against him, and obviously you know, they're not the only ones. I've got some numbers for you. Uh, Logan Webb this year in the first inning, 409 ERA, second inning, a 591 ERA, in the third inning, a 0.86 ERA, in the fifth inning, or in the fourth inning, a 1.7 ERA, <laughs> in the fifth inning, a 3.43 R ERA, yeah. in the sixth inning, a 2.45. So the precisely. Numbers, wow. The numbers, the numbers yeah. back that up. Yep. Yeah. And, and yeah, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say all of those letters, but. The Giants bullpen is sick. Uh, we knew once they, you know, the, Duvall is one of those shutdown closers that the Diamondbacks wish that they had. We hope that we have in Paul Seawall, but we don't know because we haven't seen him pitch yet. And we don't know, Jesse, if we'll ever see him pitch. That's the way that it feels <laughs> right now. Uh, I was trying to be rational. I was trying to be level-headed, but I went completely off the deep end before you joined us. And I said that if the Diamondbacks can't win this upcoming series against the Twins with Zach Gallon and Merrill Kelly – pitching in two out of the three games and Ryan Nelson pitching on the road. I am ready to call the Arizona Diamondbacks season dead. Am I being, wow. melodr- am I being melodramatic? <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. you are being melodramatic, <laughs> Derek. That is, well, that is the easiest question you've asked me so far. I needed, I uh, needed that. I need you here, Jesse, because without you, uh, my, my, my mind wanders and I, I think crazy things. We're, we're still a good month out from, I think, playing games that are that are absolute must win, at least given like roughly where the Diamondbacks are in, in the standings right now. 
But at the same time, yeah, like the Diamondbacks, they, they kind of do need to win this series in another sense in, in Minnesota. They, you know, it would be really nice if they could come back tomorrow and 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 win the series finale here in san francisco uh you guys are right i mean those pitching matchups in in minnesota are reasonably favorable i mean i guess anytime you have zach gallon and merrill kelly pitching in the same series as well as ryan nelson on the road as you mentioned then you know things line up about as is about as good as they possibly can for for the d-backs and twins haven't played particularly well of late either I believe they just got swept by the kansas city royals over the weekend and we're stuck in a little bit of a, a losing streak themselves. So, I mean, the Twins might be the worst team the Diamondbacks have played in uh, quite a while at this point, I guess, maybe going back to, to playing the Pirates uh, right before the All-Star break. But obviously the Twins are still a decent team and the Diamondbacks are going to have to play well in, in order to take care of business there. Well, Jesse, we have one more in San Francisco, so we will talk to you tomorrow. Uh, Tommy Pham, will he be joining the team, and will he be available to play in tomorrow's game? And we should, should we see him either in the starting lineup or used at some point? Tori said today that he expected Tommy to arrive tonight, so I'm expecting that Tommy Pham is probably already here, would be my guess. We didn't see him downstairs just now, but he's probably already here, and yeah, I think it's a pretty safe bet. He'll be able to suit up and, and start in the game tomorrow. Tori said earlier today he just had some some stuff to take care of before he was able to fly all the way across the country. Obviously, it's a it's a pretty pretty long trek over there from the East Coast. So, uh, yeah, I do expect him to be here tomorrow. And as of right now, like we haven't really felt the Diamondbacks' two primary trade acquisitions. Right, Tommy Pham hasn't played in a game. We've seen a little bit of Jace Peterson, more more of a utility type player. Uh, but as you guys said earlier, we haven't seen Paul Seawald pitch yet in the game i actually kind of wondered if the d-backs would use seawald anyway in this game he's on four days rest right now if he i guess now that he hasn't pitched today he's going to be on five days rest tomorrow so you almost feel like you're at a point where like you kind of just need to get the guy some work he hasn't pitched since july 28th with the mariners but yeah hopefully the d-backs are you know in a position to win tomorrow's game and we can see what that looks like thunderbolt 47 just called you the tory of the phnx fam and knowing his history, I, was gonna say, that I think he might want you fired. I don't know <laughs> exactly where that, what that means, but I'd be careful. Uh, Jesse, we look forward to hearing from you tomorrow, hopefully after a D-backs win, and hopefully after seeing Paul Seawald come out and get the first save as a member of this team. But until then, make sure to follow Jesse on Twitter, Jesse and Friedman, for all of your updates on the Diamondbacks. And, uh, of course, we appreciate you uh, rubbing our faces and how good the <laughs> weather is in San Francisco. It's it's entirely too cold. I never I never said it was good. It's it's freezing here. You would hate it. <laughs> good. I hope you hate it. All right. I'll see you later, buddy. All right. Bye, bye Jesse. Bye, Jesse. All right. Well, um, you want to hear something absolutely terrible? That would be. I, why not? Um, Ahmed Rosario. Yeah. Remember how he was just like not good? No, I. Go ahead. Do you just remember how it was wasn't good? Yeah, and then he got traded to the the, the Dodgers, and we're like, yeah. of course, we, we be saw good. Lance Lynn's numbers uh, in the Dodgers game. So yeah, go ahead. I mean, two for four today with a home run. Um, he went over in his last game. Game before that, one for one. Game before that, four for two, or two for four. I don't. Um, I don't, don't want to know anymore. I don't want to know anymore. I don't know what what can the what what are the Dodgers doing? Can we send spies over there to figure it out? Because I I need something. And hey, Keegan yes, kind of sucks though. I don't know. Didn't he get like a game winning hit oh, shit, yesterday? Oh, I don't uh, I don't want to talk about this. I, I just want to say on my end, looking at Jesse's like view in the background with all the seagulls flying around in the background, yeah. that just that just grinds my gears. Yeah. That's so upsetting. It was salt in an open seagulls wound suck, tonight. Dude. Yeah, seagulls, seagulls are the salt. worst. Yeah, but but you know why they're you know why cool they're fucking air. flocking there, right? They want the food. Garlic french fries. Yeah, of course. Garlic french fries. It fucking ugh. Oracle Park. It is a new toothpick. Brown Hog Mama. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not picking look, up my toothpick off the floor. Um, I'm ready to throw shade at this team. And of course, in order to do that, I need my Shady Ray sunglasses. So I will have to refrain today. But of course, you need Shady Ray sunglasses as well. Because most of you live in Arizona. And there's no reason why you shouldn't have a quality pair of sunglasses. Especially premium polarized shades. But uh, you should also get sunglasses from a company that backs the purchase of said sunglasses. With an insane lost and broken replacement plan where if you lose or break your sunglasses, even on the very first day of owning them, they told us they will send you a brand new pair free of charge, no questions asked, 
no judgment. I'm not going to get all judgy and make you fill out a form or something like that. They're just going to make sure you get your sunglasses back. And of course, we know what happens with sunglasses. You always leave them somewhere. I left my sunglasses on uh, the counter at a store I was at. And when they called me back to tell me that I left my sunglasses there, I had the audacity to be bothered by the fact that they were like chasing you get to me be like, down. You could have been like, keep them. Yeah, I was like, fuck it. I'll get a free pair from my friends at Shady Rays. That's <laughs> what happens. But you can shop their entire collection at their location here in town at Kierlin Commons. It's a full stop shop for all things Shady Rays. So, of course, if you don't love your Shady Rays, if you get them online or even if you get them at the Kierlin Commons store and you decide that they don't fit or you don't love them as much as you thought you did, you can return them for free within 30 days. Uh, either exchange them for a new pair or get your money back. Of course, no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code PHNX to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Uh, we've been working a lot of late nights here with these post-game shows we've been doing. And I have now completely and utterly been spoiled by Factor Meals. Uh, hmm. And I say that because... I don't even want fast food anymore, which is was usually that was usually like my late night kind of thing, right? Like it was almost like a treat. Like we get done here around ten o'clock, ten thirty after a baseball game. I'm hitting up Wendy's on the way home. I'm hitting up In and Out. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Now, I'm looking forward to a delicious, healthy meal that will be made in two minutes. That I actually am craving more than any cheeseburger or any French fries I can get on the way home. They have wild things like grilled steakhouse filet mignon and bruschetta shrimp risotto. And like, there's one thing about like these frozen or that these are never frozen meals, but like any kind of pre-prepared meal about like the taste, right? And about, yeah, it's healthy, but how good was it? And there's just something about factor meals that they have like yeah. a sauce or a butter yeah. or garlic or something else that's part of mm -hmm. the main dish that like makes it absolute fire. Like it's incredible. I've been on the fact I, I was getting factor for months before. We started. We even started getting it. Yeah. And like, and see, Mac and Shane were all on it. I, I am, yeah, because I've seen them here at the mm -hmm. office. You guys had them here quite yeah, a bit yeah. in the refrigerator, right? And so, like, I am one of these people that, like, I tend to think a lot of this stuff is a gimmick, yeah. or I tend to think it's kind of like a fad and it's going to phase mm -hmm. out or whatever, right? There's a lot of these like make your own meal things, but they send you just a whole ass tomato, and I'm supposed to cut and dice I, that. Yeah, I can't take like, it. Like, I have time for that. Are you kidding me? Do you know how many baseball, 162 baseball games during a regular season? I need my meals made for me, and that's what Factor does. They send them uh, to me all ready to go. Uh, they're calorie conscious. They're good for you. They have uh, just amazing options. Like, I mixed all of mine together. It was like broccoli and mushrooms and chicken, and oh, it was yeah, just, yeah. Yep. it was amazing. And it doesn't matter what kind of diet you're on, whether you're on a keto diet vegan vegetarian protein plus it doesn't matter they have a meal plan built for you uh and of course in july uh, or excuse me uh last month we had an incredible uh set of of meals but every month uh they have a uh, like a chef curated set where again if you can't if you can't pick out what you want they'll just send you a bunch of good stuff that was picked out by their chefs over at factor uh you can also check out uh the options that they have you simply choose your meals and then enjoy fresh flavor packed uh, packages sent directly to your door. So, and they're just ready in two minutes. So again, when you're busy and you're on the go, it's a good meal and it, it's a good meal fast. Cause I know people don't want to wait. I don't want to wait 20 minutes. I want to wait 30 minutes, two, two minutes. That's acceptable. So no prep, no mess, uh, head to factormeals.com slash PHNXD 50 and use our code of PHNXD 50 to get 50% off, uh, your, your first order over there at factor meals. That's code PHNX DBAX 50 at factormeals.com slash PHNX DBAX 50 to get 50% off. Uh, and also, before we go, want to give a shout to our friends at Pins and Aces for making my favorite gear uh, in the world when it comes to, I want to say golf gear, but it's just it's just what I wear. Yeah. Like, I, I dress like a cool toddler, if you will, right? Like, prints that you would normally see on a small child that would make you say, I wish they made that in my size. Well, Pins and Aces has you covered because they do make it. In and and I dress like a cool adult, and they also make stuff for me. Look, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to label myself as dressing like a cool toddler, but I don't. It's the, I guess it's the, it's the, it's the pattern. It's the matching. polo shirt with the. It's the matching too. Yeah, yeah, but it's also with my little cargo shorts and my tiny legs. Um, <laughs> but Pins and Aces has you covered because they make amazing golf gear uh, that you don't even have to golf to wear. It's like the leisure athle uh, le athleisure wear. You know, it's like that. 
uh, but it's golf golf leader wear that you can wear wherever you want. They make amazing polos, hats, golf bags, and of course beer sleeves that don't have to necessarily be used for golf. Uh, can just store seven beers wherever you need seven beers stored, but they do fit nicely in a golf bag. We love our pins and aces gear. Uh, and of course they are the official golf apparel partner of PHNX and all city. So make sure to check out pins and aces.com and use code PHNX to receive 15% off your first order. And you will get free shipping with that as well. That's pins and aces.com. I am ready to see an Arizona diamondbacks win and hopefully oh God, yeah. tomorrow it's, I, I will say this, you tend to, say like one win all of a sudden changes things right yeah like it can at least with 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 the way this series has gone splitting the series with the giants in a four game series seems pretty good at this point yeah seems I mean, like a win. i'm not gonna say yeah i don't feel like it's not gonna feel like a win but it's gonna feel a lot better than a loss losing, i'll tell you that damn sure. like, it, yeah. it, there'll be something to take from or, or, it'll just at least the mindset of like damn we sucked and we still managed to get away with that uh let's try and figure some things out now <laughs> yeah We've had a couple of a couple of those recently, so excuse me. Um, but uh, of course, we will be back here tomorrow uh, at some point with the Arizona Diamondbacks game ending and us doing a post game show. Uh, Jesse will be joining us, maybe briefly, maybe not at all. If he if he maybe misses that flight. his flight, we're we're not going to let Jesse miss his flight to be on this show. Look, I know he's important to this show, but that's why we need him back here as soon as possible. So we can't let him miss his flight. But uh, you can follow him at Jesse and Friedman. You can follow me on Twitter. Are we still calling it Twitter? Is it the X? They don't even call it retweets now. Twitter. They're it's just still Twitter. They're still Twitter.com. Like, are they tweets? Are they X's? Posts. And re X's? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they anymore. changed the but- button from I hate it. tweet to post. I hate it uh, so much. Fun fact, though, I found out since I have Twitter blue, um, I can change the color of the icon uh, on my phone. So now I don't get confused because now it's blue ish. No. Oh. Instead of being black. That's just for Twitter blue people? Probably. Sons of bitches. I heard you can also hide your check mark now. Yeah, but I mean, if you're going to pay for it, you got to fucking own it. That's so weird. Like, oh, uh, cowards. You cowards. You cowards. I gotta, I gotta, I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I don't pay for it. Like, just uh, own it. Yeah. There you go. Own it. Well, you can follow him at Sean underscore deposit, yeah, whether he has mark. a check mark or not. I don't have a check mark anymore. I had one for years. I loved it. I really enjoyed my check mark. I got a lot of free shit. Because of my check mark, I'm not gonna lie, but it's gone now, and so is the free shit. But you could still follow me at cap underscore caveman with a K. Uh, but none of that matters because we're Damon's dogs, and that means you have to follow Damon at Damon uh, Dog, and that's D A W G. And of course, you have to bark when you follow. Him. We all listen again. We bark when we're Damon's dogs. Uh, of course, all roads though lead to at phnx underscore dbacks and at phnx underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We thank you guys for being here tonight, for being Arizona Diamondbacks and sticking with us after this loss because this one stung quite a bit. But I uh, appreciate your time on behalf of this crew. We always thank you for being here. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it's so much more fun when you shove in your Major League debut. Oh, my God.